Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, welcome as we gather today in person and online. It is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, the last green day. Uh, this morning, uh, we are taking things a little bit off script from the traditional uh, liturgy because we are recognizing our decision from last November to become a Reconciling in Christ congregation and reflect upon what that has meant for us this past year and where God is calling us to go in the future. Uh, we also want to take this time to thank all of those who are serving or have served in our nation's armed forces. Um, so if you are present here or online, Brandon, can we get the folks online on the big screens? Um, can you please stand or put yourself on camera to be recognized, please? If you're here, if you're here online or here in person, you served or are serving in the armed forces, please stand or if you represent somebody who's serving or has served. We're gonna applaud anyway. Thank you to all of our military uh, folks who uh, have served. Oh, yes. Thank you, Paul. Woo uh, if you wish to receive communion today where you're seated, uh, make sure you grab a communion cup from the back uh, or up here in the front. Uh, additionally, we're going to have communion at the altar uh, for those who are comfortable coming forward to do so, and that will be administered uh, via intinction. And then quick thank yous to Bruce and the choir for their musical leadership this morning. Myself, Alicia Wood, I will be your assisting minister and lector today. You'll see me a lot. Uh, Linda Gearing and Michelle Zimmerman were serving as our ushers. Unfortunately, Isaac is sick, but thanks to Isaac for having volunteered to be acolyte today. Uh, Brandon is running our tech, and closed captioning, as always, is available. And with that, we're going to get rocking and rolling. All right. In God's boundless diversity, we gather together in this time and space, breathing in the Spirit's invitation to connect and learn and answer Jesus' call to justice and action. We are all made in God's image. Please rise. In the name of our heavenly parent and of the only begotten child and of the Holy Spirit ever present in our lives. Amen. Your people, O oh God, long to feel seen, named, and cared for. Through the centuries of its existence, the church has often excluded and pushed away people, calling them other and unclean. Now it waits for those harmed by its action and inaction to lead the work of reconciliation. Today, Today we, we worship, worship with open, open hearts, hearts and minds, readying ourselves for the holy ministry of justice and, and equity work. work. As, As your people, we know God is with us and that, that your Holy, holy Spirit, Spirit makes reconciliation possible. As we seek and learn how to make the church a safer space for all your children, Help, Help us, us to, to trust, trust in the Spirit's, Spirit's guidance. guidance. As we seek to be an advocate for our LGBTQIA plus siblings and all who are told they are other or unclean. Help, Help us, us to trust, trust in the Spirit's, Spirit's guidance. guidance. It is with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the grace of Jesus that we confess and ask for forgiveness we proclaim with joy and love that people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions matter, that black, indigenous, and people of color matter, that neurodiversity and differing abilities of bodies are sacred, and that we are a church stand firmly against racism, homophobia, transphobia, and any other sin that makes people feel less than God lovingly made them to be. Amen. 
The saying is sure and full and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, soften our hearts this day as we seek to hear your words and commands. In a world where we are daily confronted with ways we are different, told to make ourselves smaller for the convenience of others, teach us as your people how to celebrate your boundless diversity reflected in every person, for we are all wondrously made in your image. Guide us to be people of faith who are committed to learning and relearning what it means to welcome, include, celebrate, and advocate for all whom you call beloved. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I can teach some quick motions for this. Where are you? <laughs> Sorry about that. I lost. I was looking at my bulletin on my phone and somehow still missed this. Um, do you girls want to help me teach the motions here? This is a uh, quick calisthenics here, everyone. <laughs> So this is pretty easy, so we are going to get to a point where we sing like the old rhyme here is the church, 
here, bum, bum, bum. I'm forgetting the lyrics, but, <laughs> but um, I've never been good with lyrics. So basically, how it goes, and we're asking all of you to help us with the motions when we get to this point, and we'll, we'll, we will be your worship leaders for that part, at least. So it goes, here is the church, okay? So you make that, and then you go, here is the steeple, all right? And then for open the doors, you go like this. I know sometimes that's to show all the people, but for open the doors, you go to this part, so you're showing the people. And then for see all the people, you go see all the people, okay? And then you go share the love, and then feel, and you give yourself a hug, feel the spirit. And then finally you go, here's the church, here is the church, all right? So you girls remembered it better than I did. So we'll, we'll try it one more time all together. So it goes, here's... Stand up for this. I told you it was calisthenics. So um, you go, here's the church, here is the steeple, open the door, and then see all the people, and then share the love, feel the spirit, here is the church, Here's the church. Beautiful. So we will stay out front for when we get to that part. Do you guys want to watch the lyrics? Excellent direction following everyone. <laughs> A plus gold stars. The first reading today is a reading from Micah chapter six. <clears throat> Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? 
answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remembered now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, what you may know the saving acts, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Second reading today is a reading from Galatians chapter 3. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. in my head, not the 21st, so uh, made sure my markings in my scripture are correct. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. The young and those just feeling young at heart are welcome to come down if you'd like to get a better look at the... No, that's okay. I can stand. But if you'd like a better look at the book, you can come down, but no pressure. 
This is one of my favorite books when I was growing up especially. This is called You Are Special. And this is by Max Licato, Max Licato, I don't, I've never known how to pronounce his last name, but. Yeah, you can sit with the pastor. Okay, you're good there. So the Wemmicks were small wooden people. Hello. All the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall and others were short. Some wore hats and others wore coats. But all were made by the same carver and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of Golden Star stickers and a box of Gray Dot stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. The talented ones got stars, too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others, though, could do little, and they got dots. Punchinello was one of those. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched so that people would give him more dots. Then when he would try to explain why he fell, he would say something silly, and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't even want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water, and then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who also had a lot of dots. He felt better around them. One day, he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star. But it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars. So she would, they would give her a dot. But it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia, Lucia replied. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around, giving each other stars and dots. 
It's not right, he muttered to himself, and he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The, t the stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench, and a hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello. The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemmick asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm, the maker spoke thoughtfully. As he looked at the gray dots, looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I, I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks, just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you are pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know, she told me about you. Why don't the stickers stick on her? The maker spoke softly, because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come to see me every day and let me remind you of how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. The end. <laughs> so let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for making us, thank you for making us special. Help us to see that in everyone else we see. Instead of putting stickers on people, help us to see everyone is made by you and loved by you. Amen. 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 Thank you for sharing that story, Seth. Uh, we were talking this week that a day like this deserves stories. Another one I will recommend to you if you are not familiar with it is the story of Sneetches. Okay? Little different twist, but the same meaning.
the same outcome, the same message. All right. And it was fun to hear all of the laughter and the joy that uh, happened during our choir anthem. And who said you can't, you can't have fun in church, right? <laughs> Good. Brown versus Board of Education, 1954. The opinion of the Supreme Court in that case said that separate but equal is false. They are neither separate nor equal. That education must be provided equally and together, no matter one's race. Gideon and Wainwright, attorneys must be provided for people who are indigent, 1963. Miranda v. Arizona, 1966, rights must be read to those who are being arrested and they must be warned against their possibility of self-incrimination, 1966. Loving v. Virginia, 1967, interracial marriage is protected. Roe v. Wade, 1973, a woman's right to choose was decided and affirmed. Jackson v. Birmingham Board of Education, Title IX, you can't be dismissed or fired because you complain about sexual misconduct or be misbehavior. Obergfell and Hodges, 2015, same-sex marriage protected. R.G. and G.R. Harris Funeral Home and versus the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission 2020, Title VII of Civil Rights Act prohibits discrimination against transgender individuals. This is but a thumbnail sketch of all of the Supreme Court cases since the mid-50s that have sought to move forward the understanding in our Constitution that all people, all men, it says, but all people are created equal. Whether it's race, gender, gender identity, education, judicial, pay and benefits, or the right to choose, these cases cited merely represent the tip of a very large iceberg of efforts to seek justice for those who were being denied it. As I prepared for this morning, these cases, all of which come with their own compelling stories, the people who brought these cases, the individuals who dared to step out and take a risk, their stories matter. Stories of injustice suffered come to the, my, my mind as a political science major and pastor and drew me to what is one of the, my favorite passages in all of Scripture, the reading from Micah we just had this morning, particularly verses 6 through 8. <coughs> If you paid attention, that passage also is set in a courtroom. I suggested to our Thursday group, Bible study group, that it could be a family court, for there is a controversy brought by God to the people whom he had called out of slavery from Egypt and had shepherded them through the wilderness and now into this land of promise they had lived in for decades and centuries. But their relationship had not gone well. In fact, we learned that the word Israel means to strive with God, and they had striven mightily. Not because God was unfair to them, 
but because they didn't want to listen. They were recalcitrant children. Just as we are sometimes when our parents try to guide us and lead us in the way that we should go and that is good for us and healthy for us. Even as adults, we can be recalcitrant. My wife will let you know that. If you ask her about me, there are just some things I just don't want to do. I suspect we have all have some of those things. So God, in those opening verses of this portion of Micah, this sixth chapter, calls upon the whole, the whole earth. You paid attention, he says the mountains and the hills, but then he goes on to say the foundations of the earth. You are the witnesses, pay attention. You are to issue judgment in this dispute between me and my children. And we find out that the dispute is exactly what I suggested. God has been faithful from the calling of his people and the bringing them out of bondage in Egypt, to leading them through the wilderness, to bringing them into this land of milk, flowing with milk and honey, this land of promise they now occupy. And through much of it, the people of Israel continue to seek after other gods, to treat each other unfairly. In fact, the list is rather extensive. Those cited by Micah, they worshiped other gods, engaged in human sacrifice. The king of Israel, of Judah at this point, remember the kingdoms have separated by now, northern and southern kingdom. The northern kingdom's been overrun by Assyria. And the southern kingdom now hangs on a thread. And to ward off the Assyrian king and his army, the king of Judah commits human sacrifice, sacrificing his own children. Think about it. If you're a parent, think about it. Putting your own child at risk to save yourself and the country. But general dishonesty is mentioned by Micah, along with practiced injustice and bribery. In other words, from the least to the greatest, the people of Israel, the people of, Israel, the people of this southern kingdom of Judah have walked away from the God who brought them to this land of promise. And now God seeks to call them to account for their sinful behavior. Feigning repentance in the sixth verse, let me get to that, the reply comes with what shall I, but it could be we, come before the Lord and bow myself, ourselves, before God on high? Shall I or we come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? And it gets progressively higher, the, the, the expectation. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I or we give my firstborn human sacrifice for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? They're being facetious, if you will. They're feigning repentance as they ask God what they need to do to regain his favor, as if it's in their power, and then continue out there in the world to do whatever they wish. <coughs> and finally, 
in verse 8. The prophet tells them what is God's desire. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but one, to do justice, two, the word here is hesed, or mercy. That's what kindness is in the Hebrew, the word hesed, mercy. And then finally, and to walk, it says humbly, but scholars who are better at Hebrew than I am say it should more likely be intentionally or deliberately. Walk intentionally or deliberately with your God. That's what matters. Not all of the other stuff, not necessarily our gathering here for worship. While that's certainly part of it, to proclaim our allegiance, to hear God's word, to be challenged in our living so that we live better lives out there in response to the love that we receive and experience here in this community of faith or any community of faith. That's really what last November was all about. When this congregation took the vote, it did to become a reconciling in Christ congregation. It was to move in a new direction, to say that we are not the judges of who God loves, like the story Seth just read for us. It is the Creator who loves us and who has wonderfully made each and every one of us no matter who we are. Fellow children of God, our decision last November to move forward and become a reconciling in Christ congregation was in a small way to listen to the voice of that ancient prophet as he sought to remind the people of his day that God desires us to take seriously our relationship with God and that it is intricately tied to our relationship with those whom we see, that we worship this God whom we cannot see, as we share fellowship and life together and God's love with those whom we do see. Our neighbors. And become for them the good neighbor. I have given thanks throughout this past year that we had the courage to make the decision we did last November. And I believe foresight. It was a good beginning. Now let us continue to grow in the work of reconciliation. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Before we do the next part, I encourage you to pay attention to the screens. The Apostles' Creed has some revised verbiage today. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the almighty parent, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only begotten child, our savior and sibling, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, descended to the dead, on the third day rose again, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, from whence will come the judgment of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole earth, let us lift our hearts and voices in prayer. Merciful God, today we pray for anyone suffering from depression, anxiety, eating disorders, PTSD, schizophrenia, or any other mental illness. We ask you to guide them and us to assist them in getting the help that they need. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Just God, we pray for women and female identifying persons as we continue to strive for gender equity. Assist us in this endeavor so that one day we may all be seen as equals in the eyes of the law. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Holy God, we ask that you help us to become better allies of those who are learning more about their sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, those who have been victims of hate, those who have not been accepted, and those who are not able to be open about who they are. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Creator God, teach us how to be better advocates for our black, brown, indigenous, and people of color siblings so that they might be, might to be treated equitably as they should have been from the start. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Forgiving God, we pray for those who have been wrongfully incarcerated, those who have not gotten the justice that they deserved, and all those whose voices are being ignored by the criminal justice system even now. We pray that the true wrongdoers are found and held accountable. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Teaching God, we pray for those who are struggling to learn due to learning disabilities, lack of resources, and difficult learning environments. We ask that you help us to ensure everyone has access to a good ed education. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Almighty God, we pray for all who are currently serving in the armed forces of our nation, especially John Julian, Keith DePew, and Christiana Bouchon. We give thanks for all who have served and sacrificed in the past so that we can enjoy the blessings of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Healing God, we pray for the sick and injured, especially Kathy, Sherwood, Jean, Gail, Deb, Kenneth, Missa, Betty, Bo, Lucille, Carl, Mary Alice, Ruth, Pastor Phelps, Mary, Fred, Steve, Suzanne, Brian, Jennifer, Gary, Scott, Louise, Pastor Williams, Bishop DeForest. Be with those for whom healing feels unattainable or unaffordable. We hope that one day everyone will have access to adequate and affordable health care. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Joyful God, we rejoice with those who celebrate birthdays this week. Bless Patrick Ryan, Sarah Fick, Jansen Kelchner, and Abigail Ryan. Bring joy to all who have cause to celebrate in these days. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Comforting spirit, we remember all who are suffering due to the death of a loved one. We pray that they find those who are able to guide them through the process of grieving and that they will find your peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. 
trusting in the one who made us, dwells in us, enlightens us, and calls us, we lift up these prayers and those spoken silently in our hearts. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. you. Let us share as you are comfortable so uh, doing so, uh, the peace that Christ gives us. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. God's peace, everyone. Peace, David. Peace be with you. God with our offering.
and join with me in a pledge of commitment. I pledge to be an advocate for our LGBTQIA plus siblings and other siblings from God's diverse kingdom. We commit to daily bettering ourselves and being active in our advocacy. We dedicate ourselves to staying informed, speaking up, being honest, and supporting justice work every day for all of God's children. Let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, God of justice and accompaniment, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You made us all in your image in the spirit of abounding love and creativity you formed us. You sent us your advocates so that we can know how to advocate for our beloved as you strengthen us to love and uphold one another. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Come, Holy, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Thank you. <laughs> Nourish our bodies so that we may be fed. Teach us to see you, Christ, in those around us as we prepare this table for you. We prepare our hearts for your presence. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. And again, pay attention, there are some minor changes in the Lord's Prayer this day. Our Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Again, those who wish to receive the sacrament at your seats, you may be seated, by the way. Um, you can uncover the wafer, and with these words, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And in like manner, um, you can open the cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now at this time, I invite all of you who wish to come forward to receive the sacrament to do so. The wine will be to my right. Alicia will have that. and. Seth, are you going to assist with Seth? Seth. Are you going to assist with communion? <laughs> I don't know. Does he get a gray dot or a star? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ given for you.
did you? Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks most gracious God that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. After the dismissal, there's a couple additional announcements, so chill for a few minutes afterwards. Siblings in Christ, let us go out into the world in peace to advocate for our LGBTQIA+, black, indigenous, and people of color siblings, and all those in need of inclusion and advocacy, and let us continue to develop a fervent passion for welcome. Gathered into one by the Spirit, we go in peace to serve the Creator, seek God's boundless diversity in all you see and do, and know you are wonderfully made in God's image. Thanks be to God. You can be seated for a couple of minutes. 
just want to note some things that are kind of time limited. One of those is in the back are forms for poinsettias, to sponsor poinsettias on, uh, at Christmas. Um, we hope to do a little better than we did last year to beautify our sanctuary um, as we anticipate a uh, full return to our uh, Christmas Eve. And this year we have a Christmas Day service uh, for those who cannot be present on Christmas Eve. Um, but they're at the back on that table uh, right by the window. Um, also, uh, neglected to announce last week, if anyone would like to help with the Christmas in the Park event this year, um, it is taking place on December 11th from 3 to 5. Um, contact Seth or me. There is help needed for refreshments. They're still looking for some folks to serve as various characters in um, the uh, event. Uh, this year it's going to be simply a, a, a stay at one location kind of crash. Um, there will be refreshments. There will be opportunity to get out of your car if you want to, or you can just slowly drive by um, and uh, see the crash. There will be some musical groups as well. Um, and we're looking for volunteers for a general community type choir that day for anyone who would like to sing some Christmas carols as people come and go. Um, also, we have the angel tree out in the narthex. Please take time to uh, take a name and provide a present for that individual um, to brighten their Christmas. Um, I also need volunteers for the Salvation Army Red Kettle in our general area. We go from Radcliffe's Market over in the um, Long Swamp, uh, Topton area, Brandywine Heights School District, to Boyer's Market over in the Fleetwood School District, to um, Weaver's Hardware, and then of course here in Kutztown. Um, if you would like to help at any of those locations, or all of them, let me know and I can get you a schedule and, and help you find a time. Um, it has been an important part of my holiday uh, season for now, I think my wife will say decades. but. <laughs> Um, anyway, also this afternoon, Seth, anything more about the event at the Essers? Uh, yeah, 2 to 5.30 is going to be at the Essers Farm, 18 Church Road. And for all ages, anyone can come. We'll have a uh, puppy party, uh, hay rides, uh, we'll have fireworks. So come on out. It'll be all in hot dogs over fire. Come out. It'll be very fun. And, and a gen yeah, I was going to say a generally good time. All right, good. Um, one final comment, uh, I've been approached by a couple of folks and we're receiving again new members on the 4th of December at worship that morning. If you or anyone you know would be interested in joining, please let me know. With that, I'm going to the back to greet you and uh, welcome, and welcome you and, and wish you a good day. <laughs>